Hey everyone, I'm Tyler with Haas Stainless Cable Railing, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering 10 frequently asked questions that we receive about cable railing. We post a ton of really helpful cable railing videos and tutorials here on our YouTube channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, so question number one. How far apart should the cables in my system be spaced? Well, National Building Code is going to require that your cables be spaced no more than every three inches. Now, we typically find that most counties in the United States specify a four inch cable spacing. However, we recommend always double checking with your local building inspector and just abiding by whatever they say. All right, next question. How far apart should I space my post? Well, National Building Code is going to state that your post should be spaced so that there's no more than a four foot gap in between each post. And just like your cable spacing, we recommend always double checking with your local building inspector to see what they're going to specify. Now, with post spacing, keep in mind that the further that you space your post, the less deflection and rigidness that you're going to get out of the cables in your system. And ultimately, that's what you want. So a closer post spacing is always going to result in a better cable railing system. From a cable railing functionality standpoint, we here at Haas Stainless are going to recommend a maximum post spacing of every six feet. Okay, next up we have, what is the farthest span that I can run my cables? Here at Haas Stainless, the farthest that we recommend spanning your cable for a straight cable run or a cable run with a single angle change is going to be no further than 75 feet when using a single set of tensioning fittings. Okay, so our next question is a little bit tricky. How tensioned should my cables be? Well, National Building Code is going to state that your cable should be spaced at every three inches so that you cannot forcefully push a four inch sphere in between your cables. Now, if you're doing a three inch cable spacing, then we try and recommend that you would tension up your cables so that that sphere cannot go in between your cables. We do recognize that not everybody has a four inch sphere. So most of the time, whenever you're tensioning your cables, you're really going to be tensioning them based off of your own personal preference or to a set amount of tension that's going to pass building code for your particular area. What should the handrail height be for my cable railing system? So again, National Building Code is going to state that your handrail height can be in between 36 and 42 inches tall. But again, we're just gonna recommend that you always double check with your local county or building inspector to see what they're going to specify. So next up we have, do I have to use cable cutters when cutting my cable? Well, yes you do. Uh, and the reason being is that cable cutters are specifically designed to cut cable, whereas say something like a pair of bolt cutters or an angle grinder is going to deform the end of your cable and fray your cable strands, a cable cutter is going to slice very cleanly through your cable and it's gonna allow you to easily insert your cable into the swage cavity of your fittings and it's gonna leave you headache free at the end of the day. Okay, so next question. Will any swaging tool work with the Revo or the Axis system? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is no. And the reason why is that cable railing components are unlike a lot of the other rigging fittings out there whenever it comes to swaging. Cable railing components have to be swaged by a swager that is specifically designed to be used with cable railing components. If you were to try to use a regular rigging swager for say like hourglass sleeves or ferrules, you're more than likely going to either deform that part or your cable is going to end up pulling out of your fitting, which is going to cost you money and time in the long run. So specifically, whenever it comes to swaging the Revo and the Axis system, you're going to either want to use the swager that we manufacture here at Haas Stainless, or if it's a swager that we have tested and can recommend from a different supplier that can be used for our system. Okay, moving on to the next question. Do I have to use wood post protectors for my system? So wood post protectors serve both an aesthetic and functional purpose whenever it comes to cable railing. However, they are optional. If you're not sure if you need to use wood post protectors for your cable railing system or a specific post scenario, then be sure to check out our wood post protectors overview video, which you can find linked in the description below. So next up we have, what type of cable should I use for my cable railing system? So here at Haas Stainless, we're going to recommend that you use one by 19 type 316 stainless steel cable and either the 1 8 inch or 3 16 inch diameter. 
one by 19 type 316 stainless steel cable is very corrosion resistant it's going to be very straight running and it has little to no stretch which is what makes it ideal for cable railing systems okay so next up we have do I need to use 1 8 inch or 3 16 diameter cable for my cable railing system? Well, the short answer to this is that it's really a matter of personal preference. Both 1 8 inch and 3 16 inch cable can be used for residential and commercial applications. Both of them, whenever they're installed, are gonna offer you a very unobstructed view. You're gonna be able to see right through the cables. The biggest differences between the two is that 1 8 inch is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit easier to work with, and it's also gonna kind of offer the most minimalism, whereas 3 16 is gonna be a little bit more difficult to work with just because it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit stiffer. However, it is gonna kind of offer you a feeling of a little bit more securement because it is larger in diameter, but again, it's still not going to obstruct your view. And like I said, both of them are gonna work great for all cable railing applications. So it's really up to you. Okay, so we were saying that we were gonna do 10 questions. We're actually gonna give you guys an 11th. So will the cables in my cable railing system sag? The quick answer to this question is maybe and also yes. Now, the reason that we say maybe is because many posts and handrail constructions are different. You have metal posts and handrails. You also have pressure treated lumber or even finer type lumber like oak or epe that can be affected by moisture and weather and may potentially change shape over the life of that construction. So whenever it comes to cable railing, cable railing for metal posts and handrails is typically pretty solid. You're not really going to see much sagging or loosening of your cables in a metal post system unless a tensioner were to come loose or the cables or the cable railing system was to be damaged in some way. Whenever it comes to pressure treated lumber, it's totally normal to see some sagging or some of your cables coming a little bit out of tension. If that were the case, then you just need to go out there on the deck, retension up those cables and just kind of keep preventive maintenance kind of in the back of your mind whenever it comes to the life of your cable railing system. If you have any more questions about cable railing, then don't forget to drop us a comment. And if you found today's video helpful, then be sure to give it a like. I'm Tyler with Haas Stainless. Thanks for watching.